Hi guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, in this video, uh, we are going to build a section of crew works. Um, based, I would say, between 1970 to maybe 1985, something like that. Or maybe 1990. Um, so what you're seeing here are images of the area I'm proposing to try and model. Um, now this is, I've been wanting to do something like this for a very long time. Uh, I feel almost compelled to do it. <laughs> Ever since I saw a photo of loads of class 40s in a line, I just thought, yep, um, it would be cool to make that. So what I propose is this. Um, now, early stages, I know, uh, because nothing's actually down on the board. Um, but what we've got here, we'll start off with the basics. The board is 168 centimetres long by 61 centimetres wide. Uh, it is on 12 mil thick plywood. And the plywood is on, um, there's just uh, there's a baton running along the front, the back, um, and they are 45 by 45 centimetre battens. And I've just screwed some legs in sideways onto the batten. So the legs are removable. So this could potentially go to an exhibition is my theory. Um, but that's the board. Uh, it's pretty sturdy, pretty happy with it. Right, so track. Um, what I've done here is I've laid all the track down in a 2D format so that I can visualize the layout of crew works in, in my way. Really, I'm not gonna do it 100% accurate. It'll be close, but I just I don't think I've got enough length to really um, and width. I mean, you, you could go really into this and make something pretty extensive. What I've done though is I've picked this specific area and I've put it at a slight angle, so that allows uh, playability factors with the layout. Or when I say playability, I mean keeping the eye interested on movement across the board because you kind of want it relatively even across the board. And what I mean by that is you've got a load of sidings where a lot of trains just won't move. Um, so what you need is some movement going on. Now there's a there's a line that runs all the way past the back here and it will shoot off the back. That's one quite one loop around track that could be. Uh, there's also one that comes off this, these, this group of sidings through the centre here and goes off to the side. That could be another keep your eye interested. There's also, though, two main lines. I'm calling them main lines just because it's easier, but there's two main lines here that run all, onto the track and off the track. They don't do a lot else other than that. And the advantage with these is that I can join these to possibly other modules in the future, or I can just loop them back round. This side, we've got some sidings. Uh, well, well, there's one siding here that comes off a main line, and it would shoot off there, but these aren't going to do anything. They're just for looks. And then there's another one. This is the bit I've added so that I can get a DMU in this sort of shed. And it's, it won't go all the way in, obviously, because it's. And this isn't a shed. This is just me mocking up. So, so really, this is all mock up, but there's a DMU area. There's a bit of sidings. There's loads of sidings. There's a three way. There's another three way. There's two, yeah, there's, there's loads going on. So what I'm going to do in this video, though, is, as you've seen in the photos, and I'll flash it up again, you can see um, on the right-hand side, the two main lines there are behind the wall, and they're actually lower down. So that's the first level I need to work on. I need to work on, if we come back, the lowest level, which will be this lot here. This is all going to be ground level. The next level up, so if we go back to the picture, the bit in the middle, um, and we come back, is essentially this area here. That's going to be another, another level up from the ground level. And if we go back to the photo again, this area over here, uh, and we come back, is um, this area here. So that'll be up another level. And then this little this little bit here actually goes up even higher. It gradually goes up and crosses over the whole lot. So that's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna draw a line so I know where it needs to, to, to stay at ground level and then where it needs to jump up. I'm gonna probably start this end, I think, and then work my way up. And 
all I'm going to do is actually super glue the track down. I know a lot of people use like PVA glue or something. Once you got, once you have like um, your ballast in, and you've put glue in the ballast and stuff, that's also gluing the track down. So really, I just need to tack it all down and make sure it's all good where I want it. Well, we'll get on with it, shall we? Okay, so I've started with the crossing here. That's the first thing I've stuck down. That's it, it's down for good. Next thing, I've come across, uh, the next things to do is these points. So the first thing, the first point that I've done is this one. Um, and I say that, I've, I'll just take this off. What I'm trying to do here, it, because the, it's very tight here for the two points to be next to each other, I've had to cut some of the sleepers away. Um, I'm using fairly knackered points here, but they're all still in good condition, so they need a bit of a clean, but they will do after I've painted and ballasted anyway. So what I've done, this one comes off, and I've, I've cut the sleepers away there, it's not the neatest of jobs, it doesn't really matter, um, but I've cut those away for access or, or clearance of this point when it moves. So, I've made sure that these fit together nicely. And I've also here drawn a line. And now this line's where the rail is, there on, on that beginning of the point. So I know that this end has to meet the line there. Um, now I'm happy with where the position is of the points before I stick them down for good. I need to know where a wire is going to come through to basically move the the point blades. So on here, there's a slight hole just there, and that's where a wire is going to come through. Okay, so I've got one of these retractable pencils. So I'm just going to here just put a dot. I'm going through the hole there on the point mark it, and then I'll flick this over, mark it again, okay. So this is where the point's going to sort of live when it's stuck down, and that is for the motor eventually. Um, and then if we come down to here, I'll do exactly the same thing on this point, and I'll just line up that line there. And we're going to go for the motor being here. Put the blade. And do the same thing there. So I know, I know where to drill a hole in the wood to come through with a wire on the point. So I'm going to just remove this like that and you can only just see them those two little dots there and then this one two little dots there now you could do what I might do is just do like a three mil hole in both positions and then just sort of wiggle the drill bit so it's almost like an oval like a that sort of shape. Uh, there's various ways you can do this, um, but this is how I'm going to do it. Uh, and I want that to be a slot there. And it's far easier doing it now than it is later. You can do it later, but it's, it's just a bit of a ball ache with how many points there will be eventually. So I shall drill these off. So I'm just going to drill them and we'll be back in a second. Okay, so we've drilled the hole for the wire. Um, there's one of them. I'll clean it up, uh, or not actually. It doesn't really matter. Um, the The important thing is that um, we've got freedom of movement. If I'm poking up a wire from underneath, and it can move like this, 
that's the idea behind the hole. Now this one's just floating over the hole, so I'll try and thread this wire through. And um, this is how I'm going to do the hole out, basically. Um, so, so it can flick the point. Now, um, at, and this allows me to put anything under the board. It can be a solenoid or what I'm leaning towards are servos because then I can uh, control them with relative ease on my decoder, on my software. So I'm going to be using R, R God blimey. I'm going to be using JMRI to control servos on every point. So I can control all of this from my PC then, which would be lovely. Um, you could wire solenoids to some voltage, to some switches on a little switch panel on the end of your layout. I know a lot of people do this. Um, and that can be done. I could even have it so it does both. Um, but for the time being, I just want to get the holes in there and get the track down. And we can worry about the servo actuation or the point actuation at a later date. So that point can actually get stuck down properly now. So there's a wire, it's just a bit of piano wire. You can buy this in like meter long lengths, varying thicknesses. Um, I may use this, I might use a thicker one, all depends really. But I'm happy with how this is. Now, this point will be going uh, here. And as before, I'm lining up that bit of track to that long line there. And then this one's got to go there. And then this one also lines up with the hole in the track bed baseboard. So that'll also be the old flick. So I'm happy with those. Um, so the next thing, we'll glue these down. You don't need to see that really. Uh, I'm just gonna plod through it now. But that's how I'm gonna do the rest of the points, okay? So also what I'm using on here, um, let's just take these two or this one, they're not in great condition, um, but if they need, like you see how the sleeper there's broken, that doesn't bother me, um, and they're a bit dirty, that doesn't really bother me either, because I shall be cleaning and painting and all sorts on these. So I've got some new parts, like this This cross here is, this crossing is more or less new, um, but that's just the way it is. Uh, this one isn't. This one's quite dirty and grimy and all sorts. I would recommend you start with brand new track. However, you don't need to, um, as long as you know how to fix track. So, onwards and upwards, shall we? Let's continue. Okay, so, they're both stuck. Well, this, these three are stuck now. They're definitely down. The points will move. And another thing, so these two tracks are going to be parallel pretty much all the way, and it just so happens, this rule that I've got, if I put it against this edge of the side of this track, it is nice and level, like it's nice and straight. Now if I let it lie down a bit, it just so happens Try and get this right. It just so happens that this track with this spacing of the ruler is the same to that outside rail there. So this inside rail is to that outside rail. So I can do that all the way along now. So I know the tracks will be perfectly parallel. So I've done the awkward stuff first and then literally just there will be a bit of flexi track and there will be flexi track. And then we've got our sidings and stuff going on here. Okay, so I've cleared off the rest of the bench um, in preparation for the next level up of track to be laid. Um, at the moment where we're at is I need to cut the ends off both ends of the board, but that can wait 
because there'll probably be more to sort out later so I'll just do it all in on one I'll be soldering the joins and I'll be wiring it all at a later date but uh, so I will show you how to do the soldering of the track um, or how I do it anyway uh, so next up though is to get a board down here uh, and just raise that up a bit so looking at the pictures here you can't very, you can't see it very well I'll put the picture up on the screen again but that brick wall um, or the retaining wall if you like if you look at this picture and then I flip to the other picture you can see that there's a height difference and that height difference on the wall the brick is how high the elevation is difference between the main line side and the siding side hopefully that made sense um, but but in short I need to make it a Lego brick high <laughs> across the board okay so what I've got here is some 9mm thick plywood now I've, I've guesstimated that this is about the right height for the first level but that's got to cover the whole yard and then I can do the next level on that but once I've got this down I can do the track that's on this level and then put the wood on the next bit and so on some people do all the woodwork first but I'm just doing it in stages so it makes sense now what I need to do um, Oddly enough, these things are so, I don't, you've seen me using these loads. What I'm going to do is have this as a gap between the track and the face of where the wall will be. Um, so I'm going to find a pen. Now, I'm leaving a gap back here. That's strategic for later on, okay? Um, because the track isn't going all the way back there. And that allows me to have somewhat hopefully of a fiddle yard behind here and hopefully multi there so we'll see what we come up with later on for that now we come to the other end and it's a bit more um, scatty down here so I'll mark this but basically what I'm going to do is draw a straight line because my, my track is straight and then basically I'll use that piece cut this off then I should be able to turn this around and this should, in theory, hopefully, go in that gap-ish, uh, enough for the track to be laid on it, which is what I'm in, uh, interested in. So I'm going to draw a line and I'll cut that and we'll be back in a minute and you'll see what I'm trying to achieve here. Okay, so here we are. I've literally just cut that with a hacksaw um, and it's a bowed bit of wood, but it's okay because I'll be screwing it down. Just giving it a light sand on the edges and so the next thing to do is just spread some glue on the underside stick it down and then put some screws in strategic places just to hold the thing down Okay, so that's the second layer, or the first layer if you like, because this is ground. Um, so it's glued down, and then I've just put strategic screws all the way around, some in the middle. And uh, that's it really. Because it's screwed down, I can just work on it now. It doesn't matter that it's still wet, because it would just be drying in between the layers. Um, so the screws just anchor that down. I could have just screwed it down to be honest, but I want it not to shear and the glue should avoid this from shearing. So that's why I've glued it as well. And it's, there's gonna be another bit of wood there for sure because there's loads of points that go off in that direction. But where the um, engine shed is and stuff, we'll, we'll see. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna just toy around with this area and see what we've got next. Okay guys, um, so I've actually skipped ahead a little bit more than I said I was going to. 
I've put this bit of wood down. It's actually the offcut from this bigger board here. So it has, there's actually a slight angle, it, it tapers in. Uh, whereas the other bits weren't doing that and I would have had a gap. So that's why I've done this and I've cut it down and all the track will fit on it, um, except the off shooting pieces, but I can add a bit later. Uh, it's getting a bit late for me to start cutting wood and stuff. So um, I jumped ahead a little bit. That's gluing, it's drying, it's probably dry to be fair, it's quite warm. Uh, this is stuck down for good. I've already drilled a hole for this point and there's going to be a lot of this. So I think what I will do is I'm going to put the camera on time lapse and you can just kind of see, I think it'd just be more interesting to see to be honest. Instead of me flicking backwards and forwards, like, hey, hey look I've done this, I've done that. So let's do that. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. One thing I'm not doing that a lot of people do do is put um, a foam under the track or cork or something like that. Uh, I'm literally just sticking the track to this this baseboard and the same for up here. Now I have been umming and ahhing whether I should, it, should do it or not and the reason I haven't is every time I look at these photos you can see there the track is more or less level with the, the grimy sort of ballast that's there and actually when I ballast this it will look like that because I haven't added um, something under the track to lift it up um, also well that's the reason I'm not adding it however another reason people would add an underlay should we call it to the track is to help with uh, cutting the noise down when running trains uh, so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do it a bit backwards. I'm actually going to put a sound deadening material actually under the board uh, because by the time the top surface of this board is covered in shall we say textile-y uh, materials so we've got a ballast, we've got our static grass, we've got all sorts of stuff going on they kind of dampen noise anyway so what you really gonna have is noise eman emanating from like underneath uh, so if I can get rid of that then it should be it's not gonna be quiet but it shouldn't sound like a table you know so I'm gonna crack on put this camera on time-lapse and uh, watch this I guess <laughs> Right, okay, so what I'm trying to achieve here is if you look down off on the bridge, I'm trying to get these curves correct. Uh, so that view there is looking down, hopefully, here is what I'm trying to do. I'm hoping this makes a lot more sense. So we've got this picture looking down. Yeah, something like that. It's, it's coming together all right, actually, isn't it? <laughs> so what I need to do when I put this down is make sure the curve, I think, the loco just needs to be not hitting the wall, basically, when I put all the stuff together. So actually where this is isn't too bad, and I'll probably keep it as is, because if I come in more, it doesn't do that. It kind of does this, doesn't it? Now this one here then, you see, comes all the way over. So, and then that means these can probably come over a bit as well. And then, it's starting to get there. See what I'm doing? <laughs> so then, this one is the one over here that comes up onto the bridge that we're looking from and then this is all that other stuff going on in the background so hopefully that makes a lot more sense but yeah this is this one's looking pretty good I just need to check the clearance so what I'll do is I'm gonna get six locos and just chuck them on and we'll see what we're getting okay guys hopefully, hopefully this will help you uh, visualize what I'm trying to visualize and what I've done is I've tried to 
somewhat replicate this picture, okay. So the main the main reason for me to do this uh, which would be probably more at that angle. The main reason for me doing this is so I know where to put the points because <laughs> I wasn't too sure. Also, these two points are going to dictate how wide the track is actually going to be. Uh, so actually looking at this photo here, I think it's about right. Now if you look at the track, the distance between the rails, The, the gap in between the two tracks isn't far off. Like if if you put that in that gap, it would fit between the rails. So really, that's the gap to match. Um, this is all eyeballed at the minute, really. Well, I'm not. There's no measurements. But it looks, it's, it's coming along. Uh, I'm pretty happy actually <laughs> with that. What I've done though. What I've done though is I have added a bit extra on so I can get one of six class 40s here and let's say the coal wagons and then there would be I think there's five on this one and then there's six on this one. I don't need them all to work because really they would be scrap and they'd be just getting lugged around by probably a class 20 or 47. I mean, I could be wrong, but that's my assumption. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to carry on and probably nail a bit more track down, I think. Okay, guys, it's the next day. I had a bit of a um, sleep. Uh, what I'm doing next, um, I was putting this down, uh, and it is down at the moment, this rail and these points, they're down. Then I was trying to work out where to put this track, which is uh, ironically going to be one brick wide, which works out about where I want it, to be honest with you. Then what I'm going to do, once this one is down, is I'm going to space this uh, nine mil, I believe it is. Yep, it is nine mil plywood. Again, one brick away from this. Um, you can see throughout all my videos I use these as like um, I don't know what you call it uh, something to work against um, and it's been working out really good for me what I have done though is because I was eyeballing it from the other end that you saw just before this looking down with all the bits on it I was finding that this part of the track was coming over a little bit too far a bit further over than I wanted so what I've actually done is I've put this point in, I've replaced this one. So this is a straight through and it kicks off to the right. So if I hold it like that, straight and kicks off to the right. And this was there, just like that. What I've done though is um, this one here is actually a slight curved one. So I'm putting that in its place instead. Uh, and you can see where the glue was and where the old point was. Uh, that looks much better. So this one here can go straight off and then this one can can go off as well. And there's a, quite an even gap there of how the track will be. That's exactly what I was after. Uh, and then the signal box can sit in here, which is where it's meant to be. The thing I'm having an issue with at the minute is trying to work out. Um, so this point needs to start going on an incline. I don't like putting points on an incline because they start they do weird things. So it's not under any stress at the moment. It's literally the fish plates are holding this up at the minute. But there's about a three mil gap under the head there um, of the point. And I think that's a good place for it to kind of be. It's not too aggressive. And it kind of works its way up to the nine mil quite nicely here. Uh, so this needs to plateau and be flat all the way to the end here. Uh, and it just so happens I've got another bit of plywood this sort of size that can go there. So first things first, I'll get this bit of track on. Uh, and then I'll get these bits of wood in uh, and then really I'm not gluing this one down uh, I'm just going to leave it free hanging at the minute um, and I've got to work out some kind of way of ramping this in I've got some 3 mil plywood whether I use that yet or not is to be sort of decided um, from the pictures that I've seen 
like on here, this is the part that I'm struggling with because when it gets to the end there, it has to ramp down at some point. Um, and I think it's going to be a pretty, not a sharp cut off, but it's going to have to almost just ramp in like this, I think, and just sort of end. Uh, because let's just use this brick as an example. It's, ignore the bobbles, um, but the flat face there is about level with this. Now, obviously, if I've got the platform coming in and ending, the track will be below that at some point, and I don't want that. So from this point to that point, it has to go down and in, so and sort of finish. So that's what I'm contending with. I can just tackle that at a later date, it doesn't matter. But things I need to do first, put this track in, then, then I know where to put this, and then I will know if this is too wide and needs cutting down or not. I suspect it will need cutting down, but until we get to that point, we won't know. The reason I think it will need cutting down is because it might be in the way of this. So onwards and upwards, I'm gonna carry on. And um, well, I won't show you this, I'm just gonna get this one down. And all I'm going to do is put a brick in there um, and basically work my way around and just pull the track in. So it's it's going to be that gap all the way along. Um, and then because we've got our points in here, that's my, my one brick there. That will go against that, you see. So it's a very straightforward thing to do. I just need to get it down, cut it and put it in. Okay, so I'm back. Um, I've just hacksawed some more bits up. I was just going to use the bits that I had, but they were one was that big, which was just too wide for it to be a comfortable fit on the board. Uh, so I've trimmed one of the pieces down, and then on the other one, I've actually tapered it in so that these two lines can come up and stop. And then that's obviously cut back, but that's to allow this uh, through line to come up gradually and then cut across um, a bit like this kind of thing uh, so <laughs> at the moment that three way is going to be supported by Lego at the minute but we'll get there one bit at a time um, it does take quite a long time to do all this and you don't really want to rush you want to just be methodical of how you do it so I'm quite glad that I made the decision to change that point because it looks far better on here uh, so actually you haven't seen this photo yet I've printed off loads of photos everything I could find on crew works I'm just kind of making it look right um, so basically from any angle it should almost this this view is going to be harder to fake because some of the track here that, that curves around really gradually which is effectively this which it does curve around gradually but the pure expanse of crew works that's on this side of this area is just massive and I can't model that it's just too big plus if you look at this whole thing on the internet like a, if you can find it I, I managed to find a, a photo where it's a bird's eye view uh, in fact I'll pop it up now but it's a pretty old photo it just shows you how colossal crew works was and that's only still a bit of it like the whole photo there is pretty much crew, vote, uh, crew works it's massive um, and actually the bit that I'm circling now is the bit I'm modeling <laughs> so it just so shows you what percentage uh, we're dealing with massive place um, right so I'm gonna get these down now uh, a bit like the other wood I won't show you that I'll either I'll glue and screw it probably uh, but we shall see uh, I'm pretty dynamic with what I do there's no points going on here there's nothing pretty you know there's nothing trivial going on there so I can put the screws wherever I want uh, this this bit here is going to be the incline up to this plateau um, and I think what I'm going to do is actually I've got some 3mm, I might put that under there, we'll see um, it might even just be card at the minute and then I'll uh, backfill it with plaster uh, so we shall see let's crack on okay so the wood is down for good it's glued and screwed um, yeah so with that I can now put that, yeah I can start putting track down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put probably these ends on first, they're done then. This I can't work out where it stops, it's somewhere between here because on here it looks like it kind of stops about here, the further 
like bridge. So that's what I'm going to do. It doesn't have to be 100% accurate, which is what it looks like I'm trying to do. Um, it just has to be good enough. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to sort of put a bit of track in here, cut it to where I want it to be, and then that'll be a buffer end. And then this other piece will just carry on off the board because what I can do, you see, is put a face of that warehouse on the end of this board so you can push something in there but actually it's going off the layout board into something else and then it can pull something else out maybe a carcass of one i don't know there's lots of playability here that's why i, I love the idea of doing all this so i well, shall continue uh, we've got a lot more track to lay in preparation basically for the, the wiring and the soldering and all the ballasting so um this is i'm really quite happy with how this is coming along Okay, so here we are, progression. Um, well, all this track is actually stuck down now, except uh, the incline here. Um, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a sideways look at this. Um, so obviously I've mocked up, it's very uh, basic, but I've just mocked up the, uh, where is it? The gray building in the background. And it's about, the height is pretty much where it's going to be it's quite a uh, an intimidating building it's massive versus engage you know um but so that's that um there's a few things to note here when i've been sticking the track down what i'll do is i've got two carriages i just put them together and i'll push one with the other one sort of floating in front of it I pushed carriages around just to check that the track works working well and the points are good. Uh, I kept getting a derailment on this point here and it turns out one of the blades was bent inwards so I just bent it back out and it's um, it's perfect now. So this is how I check all the, the track is good. That's very important because at this point if you have any track work issues now's the time to sort them. Um, and I don't mean electronically, I mean literally just with wheels derailing. So I've actually got uh, these two, which are pool pool type old school wheels, the bit bit mangy and dirty there. They will clean back up, but um, so that's that's one type of wheel. And then what I've also got, I am very careful with these. Uh, these are uh, dap hole coaches. These are from a box set I have. But the reason I use I've been using these as well. So I use two of these, and two of these. Um, I'm being very careful with these so I don't damage them, obviously. Um, they've got different kind of wheels, so the Dapol carriages there have got thinner, um, a, a lower profile flanges, so if anything's going to derail easily it's probably those. And they're all good as well. I am having some issues on this crossing and this point. Uh, the crossing mainly being because, I'll zoom in here, this is a good thing to um, look at when buying a new crossing. Um, so let's really try and zoom in here because this one is an important one to show. I'll use my pencil. Now, can you see these pieces here? It's meant to actually start here, go straight up and across. Same there, same there, and same there. Now, what I've found with this crossing, and I'll make it work, that's fine, because I'm not using this piece of the crossing, and I'm not actually going to be using this point either. They're completely redundant. But what I do need are trains to reliably come all the way through both pieces. And so what I need to do here is fix those points. Uh, I haven't quite worked out what I'm going to use yet, but the, the, the main issue I'm having is because these are so worn, and this is what you want to be looking at if you're buying an old crossing, uh, because they're worn, uh, the carriages tend to like almost derail but go off. <laughs> on their own it, it, it's like 50 50 whether they go left or right because there's such a gap there the wheel isn't guided anymore there's done there's nothing to guide it so i'm going to rectify that i'll show you what i do with that it won't be pretty but it will be functional um, i'll show you what i do with that later on um, but for the most part i'm pretty happy with this that gives me that gives me an idea of where things are going to be and it's at a slight angle and you'll see this track in the background here so there's going to be a bridge here, and that'll be traffic going into sort of crew. Uh, and there's going to be a shed here. That's uh, in real world. It starts in front of the bridge, and then it goes under the bridge and carries on. And that goes for well a while, a long, long time. So really, we've got our our in, 
Our in. Our out. Our out. And then the two main lines, in and out. Uh, this one here is a dead end. I won't go too much into this, but um, I've, I've done a fair amount of research. Some of the I've had to do compromises on a lot of the, on some of the track layout because I can't physically get the depth that I'm after. You'll see the tra this is as far back as the track's gonna be going, and everything behind there. So this board actually carries on behind here. What I need to be is very clever here with where I place retaining walls, buildings. Um, bridges and things because I need to uh, force a f uh, um, a forced perspective actually so to give the illusion that the, the the world carries on behind this so that'll be new for me I've not tried any of that my uh, oddly my granddad's done a lot of that so I might have to ask for his uh, help with that um, anyway here we are and I think the next thing to do um, other than the obvious, because I have some track hovering here, um, but I'll get to that probably not just yet. I think the first thing I need to get on with is actually soldering wires to the track and soldering track together. So what I'm going to do here, this will be part one, guys. Okay, uh, and in part two, um, I'll show you how I wire up the track. And maybe in that episode as well, we shall um, sort some of this out. There is a reason this isn't stuck down. I have glued some Lego bricks in strategic positions to get the correct incline. Um, but this is just mocked up because it needs to be removable at that portion for me to make a bridge and actually install it because of the way the track has to sit on top of everything. So I kind of have to make everything before I install the track there. Okay guys, so I'm going to call that here. Uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in part two.